Hello everyone, in this video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to vectorize, how to digitize, or how to bring your logo sketch to life using CorelDRAW. It's very simple and um, very, very easy to do. So the goal of this tutorial is to make this process very easy because I do see a lot of designers ask questions on how this is being done and the processes um, behind it. So I'll be breaking it down um, in this video. It's very much simple and um, very, very easy to do. All you have to do is um, pay good attention and um, follow every process and everything I would say in this video tutorial. There are various ways that are involved when it comes to vectorization of logos, some of which may include the use of lines, curves, circles, shapes, the pen tool or the freehand tool. So knowing when to use any of what I've mentioned is very crucial. So um, it gives you more edge and um, you know what to do. So it solves a whole lot of problem for you. So once you figure out what to do and what process to follow, considering the sketch you have, to save you a whole lot of work. So before we proceed, there are various things um, you need to turn on to be able to make the vectorization process for you in CorelDRAW very much easy and seamless. So um, to set that up, you head to the menu bar. So under the menu bar, you go to view. So you come to this area, you have um, guidelines, alignment guides, and dynamic guides. So mine is turned on already. So if it's not turned on already, do all to do that. It will save you a whole lot of work. So once you've done that, then um, you can bring in your sketch. All right, so um, this is the sketch you'll be making use of for the sake of this tutorial. So I'll copy this, right click, then um, I copy Control or Command plus C. All right, so I prefer working on a big canvas when it comes to vectorization of logo. So I like um, having a wider space to be able to flex um, myself. So I just prefer it that way. So Control or Command plus V. Alright, so this is the logo we'll be vectorizing or digitizing today. So um, the first thing I normally do is um, when I bring in my sketch into CorelDRAW is to first of all reduce the opacity or the transparency. So I'll select the image, then I select the transparency tool. Then um, I usually prefer between 50 to 70. So let's use um, Six, let's do 70 then I hit enter all right so um, I hit on the space bar to deselect the two all right or I hit on the pick two all right so uh, I have to also make sure that um, the sketch is fit to the center of the page I prefer working with accuracy so to do that um, you do P to fit to drawing page all right so whatever it is on the um, Whatever it is, it will come to the center canvas. All right, so um, moving forward. So um, the next process is to lock this. The next process is to lock this so um, so that during the process of making use of lines or whatever I'll be doing, I don't um, move this so that I don't um, affect my accuracy or balance. So I select the image, then right click, then I lock this um sketch all right so another way to do that is um select the image then you go to the menu bar under the menu bar then you come to this area where you have lock object so whichever way you prefer all right so um what do we do next now so i make use of my the busier tool here all right so um the busier tool so this is my much preferred tool for drawing lines so i make use of the busier tool here so um this is what i do i come to this area so I zoom to get a clearer view. So shifts. So um, if this opacity is not okay for you, can unlock this, then adjust the opacity. So um, I hold on shift, then I drag. So the essence of turning those um, alignment guides is to help us gain accuracy. If you notice these blue lines, that's the essence of having this Im imaginary blue line. That's the essence of turning them on. To know that your line is actually very straight. So what I'm holding currently now is um, the shift, then I'm dragging to my right, then I double click to let go off, then hit on the space bar to deselect. So um, I drag this, I hold one, I hold this node here, then um, I hold on shift to drag uniformly, 
so uh, i need to make sure this is um balanced so i unlock this select this then right click to unlock or you go to object then you unlock as you select this then hold on shift then you select this image which we've unlocked then c then if you're using a mac it's shift c all right so for window users it's just c all right i hope that's clear so um what we do next again is um we lock this again we lock this all right so um we make use of our the ellipse tool here the ellipse tool so um to draw a perfect circle you can either use um control then you drag or you hold on shift and control then you drag uniformly to draw from a certain position all right so we'll make sure this is um aligned to the bottom of this so uh this is okay shift then select this then b so if you're using a mark it shifts then b shift b or if you're using a window is shift is just b all right to make sure it's aligned to the bottom so then we increase the size of this so i'm um, using this as a guide all right so um the outline for the outline for these um lines and this circle here is um, 0 0.5 so i do prefer mine to be at um hairline i prefer it that way so that i can see more details all right so you can use whatever outline with um of your choice or outline point it's your preference so i prefer this all right so um this is fine so i can increase this so this is actually very fine all right so um we can drag this you can also make use of um, the bezier to here again so if you look close you will achieve this circle here so now is to get this line here to make this um wave here all right so um you make use of the bezier to here then you select the bezier tool. so how do i select this i long press on this and you have option to select the bezier to here all right so holding on the shifts so you drag following this line as a guide so the essence of turning on this alignment guide is that uh, no matter how i move i still won't um get distracted or my hand won't move so um that is the essence of it it helps me gain more accuracy so i double click once i'm done all right so i set the outline with um to hairline so this is my preference all right so this is a uh, this is very accurate this is very okay so um you can decide to hold control and duplicate this so you drag then right click to create a duplicate here all right so um you have to be very careful so um the essence of locking this is that so when we want to select this we don't temper with um this so that is the essence of this so we can just highlight on this and nothing will happen so we have to make sure these are overlapping this line is overlapping this circle so what do i mean by overlapping so it should be placed on it so that when um we are trimming the areas we don't want so we don't um have any issues all right so let's proceed so this is overlapping it so hold control you need to be very careful here so you drag this this is okay here so we're making use of the virtual segment delete tool because we make use of it very well here so we can actually um so this is actually very okay this is very okay all right so this is fine all right ctrl z to undo that then hit on the space bar to deselect all right so if you notice so we've actually gotten this circle and this handle here so it's to make this area now so we highlight this we select this then hold on shift and we select this so um we make use of the control button we hold on the control button then we drag this to the right hand side then we right click to create a duplicate i hope that's clear so let me do, go over it again so you select these two lines this first one then hold shift then you select this again then once both of them are being selected you hold on the control button then you hold place your cursor on this um, node here then you drag to the right hand side while holding on the control button then you right click to create a duplicate right so once this tool has been selected so you hold control then you drag it to this area 
so this is fine this is fine so you drop while holding on the control to maintain balance all right so we're making progress we've actually gotten this area this area this area so it's many this area now that's where we're heading on to now all right so um for the sake of accuracy uh, we're making use of this width so um this um two lines we've drawn here we're making use of this same width consistently this same um circle we're making use of it consistently so we select these two so we select these two then um, holding on the shift and selecting the other one so you hold control then you drag then right click to create a duplicate moving it to the right hand side then you select click on it again then the nodes change to this curve sign then you drag it to this area so you click on it, then you bring it to this place. Then you click on it again, then you drag until you're satisfied with what you have here. So this is just the sketch is serving as a guide on what I will create. So you are the one who did the sketch, you know what you have in mind or, or what you want to create. So you drag it to the right hand side until you've gotten what you wanted. Alright, so um we're making a whole lot of progress. All right, so um, we've gotten this area, this circle, this handle, this handle, and this handle. All right, so um, what do we need again? So we we'll make use of this. Select this. Hold on Shift. Then you select this. Then you hold Control. Then you drag to the right hand side. Right. Then you right click to create a duplicate. So we've created this. So this might be a bit tricky. So you have to be very careful and um, don't confuse yourself. So we've created this. So always use um, the background image as a guide, which is the sketch. So that is why I reduce the opacity so we can be able to see through it. So um, this is okay. If the opacity is not okay, you can reduce it and um, if the opacity is not okay, you can adjust it in the background by unlocking this and making the necessary adjustment. So we've made, we've made this pattern, this, this, right? then this right then this so we're making progress so we can drag this select this so always use the image the sketch as a guide when doing this so that you don't end up um, um, confusing yourself so once these two are selected you drag to the right then um, you right click to create a duplicate right I hope we're making progress. So this is what we've done. We've created this pattern, this pattern, this pattern, this pattern, right? Then um, this pattern, then we'll create this final one here. All right? So we're making a whole lot of progress. So always endeavor to list control or command plus save so that you don't lose your work. And um, during the course of this, make sure you don't move any of this so that is the essence of locking this um, image in the background because you might move this and then um, it might end up affecting the accuracy of your work or the alignment or how the work is being placed so you have to be very very careful so you don't move any of this object and take it lightly because it will affect it so control or command plus it to undo that all right so we're making a whole lot of progress so um this is where we are right now then we make use of this, this um, object now so because we're trying to create this right, right hand side that um, protrudes very that protrudes down to the right hand side of this um, sketch here. All right, so um, this is the last stage of um, duplicating this. So we select this and we select this. So we are creating a pattern here. We hold on Shift to select this, and then hold on Shift to select this circle all together. Then what I showed you then, so you hold on control, then you drag to the right hand side, then right click to create a duplicate, then um, hold on control, then you drag this closer. Alright. So this is the whole, this is better now. Alright, this is really amazing. If you look closely, we're making a whole lot of progress. We've created a pattern here. And um, just following the guide um, from the sketch we've, we have in the background, we've actually come to this. So um, following what we have, um, 
this is good progress and um this is time for to remove the unwanted area so um for we using coral draw you use um the virtual segment delete tool so it's located where you have the crop tool so you go to the crop tool area then there's a drop down menu here you click on it then you select the virtual segment delete tool so um this is what it does basically it removes overlapping segment in object so that's why i said um that line should overlap the circle to be able to have a clean cut all right so um our virtual segment will be selected you delete this unwanted area so you can zoom to get a proper or clearer view so you delete this area so we have to be very careful these are areas that some persons do um, make a lot of mistakes on so you delete this area so you follow this pattern so um this is okay so it deletes whatever areas you don't want so you just delete this follow this pattern delete this delete this delete 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 as so you can see we're forming a pattern already so you delete this delete delete and you delete this all right so we do it with this all right as so you can see you're making huge progress you're making huge progress all right so we do away with this this is you create um an imaginary line to delete um large areas of a wanted object so this is once we're done you zoom closer to um, check for any overlapping areas so you can delete them so that they don't cause any problem so um hit on the space bar to deselect so um so you might be wondering how do i add a field to this so it's because this is just the outline so um you make it of the the smart field too so i also have a video in the description below on a detailed video on how to use the smart field so you can just check it out so for the sake of this video tutorial just select the smart field then you um click inside of it so um if there if there's a space here if there's a space here um this won't be able to fill this this um space here so if there's a like an opening rather or um, let's say um these two lines didn't overlap each other they won't be able to form this um space that was just created here so hit on the space bar to deselect so you select this and drag this to the top hold control right click to create a duplicate you can change the color to give you whatever color you want so let's go with red so remember we copied that we copied the outline so you control command plus v so uh, without moving anything so you can see they are accurately placed on each on the on the final output so guys um this is what you normally see when people say um talk about grid lines so um this is how to come about it during the vectorization of logo so guys um this is all we have at the end of the day so um this might not be how it looks like um, my original work when i did it but for the sake of this story i do hope you, um you understand it and um you found it helpful so i'll be dropping a link to um the full case study on this project so you can check it out in the link in the description below and do also drop a follow to as well to really um help me a lot and also a like and comment too as well so you can check that in the description below and and um i do hope you found this video helpful on how to vectorize or digitize a logo using coral draw it's very simple and um very very easy to do so um you just have to be take time take your time and um keep on practicing more and um pick on logos and recreate them using this process and um you'd see results too so guys um that is it on this video if you found this video helpful do all to hit on that subscribe button turn on the post notification bell to get notified whenever i upload new videos and don't forget to like share and drop a comment and let me not think about this video and also if you have a video you'd like me to create on do all to drop that in the comment section if you have any questions do all to drop that in the comment section thank you for watching and i will see you on the next video tutorial